Hey, designers, I am so excited today because I have a great guest on. We're going to talk about following your heart, following your passion, talking about really trying to find some transformation in your life as a creative. Constantine Moron is coming on with us today. Congratulations for having an amazing podcast, which is really cool. And um, do you want to just start us off by telling everybody a little bit about yourself? Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much, Karina, for having me here. It's a pleasure to be here. Hello, everyone. So essentially, I am Konstantin Moruna, as Karina mentioned. I was born in Eastern Europe during the communist regime, which meant that it was a time of fear, scarcity. So my caregivers, my parents, my teachers were very much, you got to go to school, you got to work hard, you got to go into the sciences, because that's going to offer you a better chance at life. So I remember growing up, not necessarily being allowed to be creative because that was seen as something that wouldn't yield an income, wouldn't yield safety, wouldn't yield a future that you could depend on. And that's how I grew up. Then around 17, around the 2000s, is when we moved to Canada. My parents wanted to give my brother and I a better chance at a better life. So we moved to Canada and it's been it's been amazing. Now, I didn't tap into my creativity until much later in life when I realized, wait a second, I actually have a creative side because all my life I thought that because I, I'm not drawing, because I'm not singing, because I'm not playing a musical instrument, I'm not creative. And that's so far from the truth. Yeah, that's so amazing. So, but how like how did you come to that realization that you were like, oh, I'm not tapping into something that I need for myself? So tell me about that. Yeah, that's a that's a great question, Karina. One of the things that I've come to realize is that I was someone that always challenged beliefs and thoughts and teachings that weren't necessarily resonating with me. And I remember even as a child, I was challenging that a lot. And as I was challenging it through my high school years and then later through university, I've come to realize that there was a mismatch. There was something more in me that I wasn't allowing to come up. And there was some creativity, some, some way to express my creativity. And initially for me, funny enough, English is a second language. In fact, I did not speak any English when I moved to Canada. And then I, I got to learn it. And one way I was expressing my creativity, so like my second year in Canada, was through writing essays in English class. And I was like, I, I loved it, but I didn't know what that meant, right? And then a few years passed, and then I was writing articles, and I was writing things in my life and, and talking to people and, and sh- you know coming up with ideas that had a creative background. And eventually, I had some entrepreneurial adventures, which again had to do a lot with creativity. I played uh, professional poker for a while, which led into me coaching professional poker for about 10 years, creating a lot of content because I was hired by the biggest website out there to create content, so videos, written content, live streaming, you name it. And that's how I realized, wait, I am creative because I'm not only putting myself out there, but I'm coming up with new ways of doing things that have been done before. I'm coming up with new ways to engage an audience and, and bring them along the journey. And then, of course, from there, you went into many other things. And today, the podcast, my social media content, a lot of other things. Yeah. Okay. I have to ask you about this poker thing because this is very interesting. Yes. First of all, it's interesting that that was the thing that made you realize that you're creative. That I think I'm very curious about that. Like, like through the process of doing that, did you just realize you had a special skill? Or like, tell me more about that. It's a bit of all of uh, the above that you mentioned. So I, I want to be honest. I didn't necessarily realize I was actually creative until a few years ago when I was being challenged by a few people to look at my life and say, well, you've been creative there and there and there. It was showing up everywhere. So I knew in, in, in the moment when I was doing it, that you know, there's some creativity around it. But again, because I wasn't drawing very well, because I couldn't sing, because I couldn't do any of the creative stuff as I thought of it, I didn't really think of it as much. But with the poker, now I have a math and science background. So numbers fascinate me. And I got really good, really fast at playing poker. And I had a bit of luck in my favor. And that allowed me to then be like, huh, what else can I do? And all my life, I grew up as someone that learns a skill, learns something, and then cannot wait to share with everyone else in the hopes that then maybe they can pick up a lesson or two and improve their life. So it's been in school. I was a math and science tutor. Then I was, a, I, I was a professional gamer for a while, and I, and I mentored and coached people there. Then we had the poker. Then I went into the corporate world, and now with Microsoft as well, I mentor and coach people. 
And now I do it also with people in my life. And I'm, as you and I talked offline, I'm launching a coaching and mentorship business where I'm helping people on this path based on what I have found, based on all the learnings I'm, I'm going through. And I'm someone that's always, always learning and pushing myself forward. And yeah, I hope that answers your question. Yeah, that was amazing. Okay, so I'd love to even go back a little bit when we were mm. we didn't we weren't uh, recording this, but you talked about following your passion, yes. and I would love for you to dig into that a little bit and how it's kind of brought you to this idea that you want to do some coaching, you want to do um, some work with other people because of your own transformation. Yeah, absolutely. I love the question, and for those that can see, I have a sign above to my right here that says "Follow Your Heart." It's funny, I just found it randomly in a dollar store the other, you know, a year or so ago. And that resonated really well with me because what I have realized is that I chased everyone else's dream without chasing my own because I followed in the footsteps of my parents, uh, everyone telling me, you know, you got to go to school, you got to get a good degree, you got to get a good job, you got to climb the corporate ladder. And I did all of that. And I had, quote unquote, the American dream, Canadian dream, shiny toys, great career, great family life. And yet I felt empty inside. Yet I was depressed, yet I had anxiety and burnout and stress, yet I was overwhelmed and procrastinating and hesitating. And I had, I was fear ridden, fear of failure, fear of success, fear of the unknown, fear of rejection. That was a big one. And in the search to do something, to find like, okay, what's really there underneath? Why can't I feel happy for a longer period of time? Why can't I bring fulfillment and joy in my life? And this coincided with the pandemic where I had to work long hours to help enable people to work from home, which was very rewarding, but very taxing on my mental, emotional, spiritual, and physical health. And in 2021, I made a decision. I said, you know, know, enough is enough. I am doing therapy. It's not really doing anything. I don't want to go on any drugs. So what else is there? And I remember the conversation I had with one of my students when I used to teach poker. And he told me about plant medicines from... Native America and all over the world. And one in particular is called ayahuasca. And at the time when he told me 15 years ago or so, 12, 15 years ago, I dismissed it. I said, you know, that's crazy. I'm never going to touch anything like that. Because you see, I've never been drunk, nor have I taken drugs. I don't see a need for it. It wasn't something that I wanted to do. I'll have a drink occasionally, but that's it. So anyway, in 2021, this feeling came up and it's like, wow, I'm here at the calling. I need to go do this. I need to experience this. I need to explore this. So like I do with everything else in life, I spent thousands of hours researching, watching videos, reading books, listening to podcasts, talking to people about this plant medicine and what it can do. And then I was sold by the end of it, by summer of 2021, but things were closed, borders were closed, so I couldn't go anywhere. So I all I did is I booked everything for early 2022. And that's when I went to Ecuador. I spent 12 days participating in the plant medicine and the mental health retreat. And that was what I would call my spiritual awakening, my awakening to to the reality, to what I've been missing all my life, to who my true self was and the changes that I need to make in my life. It was beyond transformation for me and everyone that attended. I made some amazing friends there. But really coming back from that, I was in the honeymoon period. However, my depression and my anxiety and my stress, my burnout didn't go anywhere because nothing else changed in my life. And that actually sent me for my deepest, darkest hours because I had to sit with all those emotions to integrate everything that I've learned. Now, in the time, despite it being as negative as it was, that's when I found my purpose, my why, as I call it. And I said, you know what? I'm going to start following my heart. And it wasn't until beginning of 2023 when I said, one of the ways I'll do it is through the podcast. And in the process of doing the podcast, and of course, my transformation journey continued and I had made... I would say fast, fast progress compared to like what I was seeing around me. And people would tell me, hey, you know, you do more in a month than I've done in 12 months. And I wasn't necessarily seeing it that way, but that's how it appeared to the external world. So to come to your question, how I got into coaching and mentorship, I did mention that I mentor and coach people in my life, in my professional life, my personal life. I did it for poker, math, all those things. Well, people started to come into my life and say, hey, you know, you're going through this, you've overcome depression, anxiety, burnout, stress, overwhelm, procrastination, all the things I mentioned. Can you help me do it as well? So I said, sure, I'll I'll share what I've learned. You try it. Not all of it may work for you, but some things may. And the more I did that, the more I realized that, wow, there is actually something here because people are getting better 
and can do more and can truly live their passion a lot faster and can go a lot further. And that's, and of course, then they're like, well, why don't you look at doing this as something on the side, see if you can help even more people. Start with one-on-one, then go to group coaching, then do some courses, see if you can help people, because if that's your passion, why not? And let's see why it came down to, because, and I'll wrap it up with this, my mission in life, as I understand it today, and it's always evolving, but within the same context, is to inspire, empower, guide, and support individuals on their life journey, so they too can find joy, fulfillment, success, and abundance in life. That's it. And I guide every decision I make, I guide every action I take by that principle. If I'm having a conversation with a Korean today, have I been able to do at least one of those four things? If I haven't, yeah. then there's something yeah. missing. Yeah. So I love that so much. Okay. So interestingly enough, the thing I'm kind of hearing is that some of like your figuring out where to go and what to do kind of started with your podcast. Is that true? Absolutely. A hundred percent. Okay. Because when I was sitting in my darkest times and I came up with the idea of the podcast, it took six months to actually do anything with it. And then what I did is I said, you know, beginning of January, 2023, I'm like, enough is enough. I'm going to pull myself out of this because I was keeping people away, therapists away, everyone away. So what I did is I put my thoughts on paper and then I put them in a PowerPoint presentation because that's what I'm great at. I do PowerPoint presentations and I present to all the customers I work with and whatnot. Anyway, so I put them in a PowerPoint presentation and I went to every friend, acquaintance, family member, coworker that wanted to listen to me. I said, hey, give me half an hour. I want to run an idea by you. What are your thoughts? And every single person I talked to, they were like, wow, this is a great idea. And with every conversation, my confidence grew. And I pushed through it to the point that in March, I put a blurb of my podcast. So I came up with a mini description. It wasn't launched at this point. Launching was in May. I put it on one of the sites that allow us to find guests. And within, I think, even a week, I had like over 100 people wanting to be on my show. Now, keep in mind, they didn't know who I was. I had the blurb about the show and the mission and whatnot, and that drew people in. And I was like, wow, that's amazing. Started having conversations with people. I actually had 30 conversations before I even went live in May. And I made the decision to do two episodes a week because of the demand. And with every conversation, I was learning so much that it was opening up my mind to the possibilities. Right? Because initially I was like, the way I execute my mission is my podcast. Then as I talk to people, I'm like, oh, yeah, I haven't considered this and this and this opened up my mind so, so much, Karina. Yeah. So that network, I I do think there is a lot of power. I remember when we started our podcast, you know, that connection with people and starting to see what they're doing really does open up your mind to all the possibilities that are out there for you. So you started the podcast. It sounds like it's, well, first of all, let's talk about the podcast. Yeah. I'm going to be on your podcast. We're like, we're kind of doing an exchange here and talking on each other's podcast. Tell, um, tell everyone the name of it and what you guys focus on. Yes. So the name is Unleash Thyself, which is essentially a name that came to me as an idea that I want myself to unleash the best version of me possible, which means I also want others to experience that. So it's all about becoming the best version of yourself, the version that you know deep inside you can be. And it's all about personal and professional development, self-discovery, so going inwards for the answers, but also spirituality. And spirituality not tied to any particular religion, but to the idea that we are connected, we are all connected, we're connected to nature because we are nature. There's something greater than we, that we can see, and there's so many things that we don't know. And that's really where this comes from, having an open mind and being like, I'll bring guests on, they have a beautiful story to share, something they've done in life, like yourself and others, and then just have a beautiful conversation. And that was the beginning of my podcast. Now, halfway through the year last year, I realized I loved sharing my story and what I've learned. So I've switched up where one episode a week is a guest interview and conversation, and one is me picking up a topic and going deep into it. And where possible, I'll look at the science, I'll do the research, and I'll come back with that information for the audience. Yeah, so incredible. So, so good. You guys, if you want to go check it out, it's called Unleash. Remind me again, Unleash Your thyself, 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 unleash thyself, you guys. So amazing. So good. Um, 
So I know that you are coming out with this coaching and mentorship program. Do you have, um, just as people are kind of interested in it, where they can go to learn more about it and kind of your timeline for coming out with something like this? Yes. So we are building that website right now, specifically for my own brand and, and coaching. For now, I'll, I'll speak high level on it. I mean, there's a couple of things that one can do, but as I mentioned before, the big catalyst for me was finding my why, my purpose, and then living it every day. So that's what the program, the first one I'm coming up with is focused on. It's a 10 to 14 weeks, depending on how much time people can dedicate on, it's called purpose to action. So on identifying your purpose, inventorying to see how much of it shows up in your life, and then being intentional about bringing more of it into your life. And then underneath all of it is underpinned by psychology, by science, and the idea of rebooting and rewiring your brain, meaning that we look at all those limiting beliefs that we have, all those things that we've learned and we've taken out hours that are not really ours, mm -hmm. all the boxes that we drew around ourselves as to why we cannot achieve something. And we break those boxes. And by breaking those boxes and uncovering the why, the people that I've had through the program so far have seen amazing transformations over five weeks, six weeks, eight weeks. Yeah, that is amazing. So, so good. I love this idea of working on purpose because it, especially right now, we're kind of early in the year. Sometimes people have New Year's resolutions, kind of figuring out what they want to do. And I just had a conversation with a couple of other CEOs. We were just talking about how um, at the end of the day, it really is about purpose because like yeah. everything else kind of ends up not mattering, right? Oh, a hundred percent. You're so spot on there because I looked at my life, right? And when I uncovered my purpose and I did my own inventory, I was like, huh, most of the things I do in life are not backed by this because I was showing up as an unauthentic version of myself in many areas because I had a fear of rejection, a fear of not fitting in. And then what I realized is, okay, well, is there any wonder I'm depressed and I'm feeling anxious and I'm feeling burnt out and stressed out and overwhelmed if I'm not actually following my heart and if I'm not actually being who I'm supposed to be? Now, again, you're not going to find all the answers right away, but at least you find, it's kind of like the chicken and the egg, right? Do you find who you are first or do you find what your purpose is? I argue that it could be either or, or but if you start with your purpose, at least from that, it would let you know who you are and then it can build on each other and it will evolve over time. Yeah. I love that. So, so good. Um, will you give everyone the website so that they yes. can come check you out? Absolutely. So the website right now for the podcast and myself is unleashthyself.com. The website where I have the coaching and the programs and everything else I'll be doing will be under my name. And that's coming up in the next couple of weeks, months, hopefully by February, constantinebomorun.com. And it's my name without the E at the end, B-O, which is uh, my nickname and my last name, M-O-R-U-N. We'll I'll make sure. Yeah, we'll get that into the show notes for you guys, unleashthyself.com, and then Constantine's full name, which we'll have out um, in the show notes. Any last minute words of advice for someone who's maybe struggling right now, someone who is dealing with some anxiety, maybe some depression, and isn't sure what they should do? Yes, absolutely. There's a couple of things that come up for me that I would like to share. The first one, it's simple. I know some people may hear it and be like, nah, that's not me. But know that you have the power to change absolutely everything and anything in your life. If you're getting yourself to where you are today, you also have the power to get yourself out of where you are today. So if you're feeling anxious, if you're feeling down, if you're feeling stressed, burnt out, it's normal. It happens because we live a life that's so hectic, that's so misaligned with who we are at our heart, that it will pull us down in those dark times. However, you can also pull yourself out of it. Now, you will need help, right? There are plenty of therapists doctors, people that specialize in that, or in some cases, even people like myself or other mentors and coaches and people in your life that can help you come out of it. So that's the first part. The second part is what I've come to realize in all my research with psychology is that people always focus on controlling things, right? I know I focus as well. It's like, oh, I want to control this. So it comes out perfect. And it, that, of course, spills out into our lives. So I might control my spouse, I might control my kids, I might control my relationship with my friends or how things show up. And what I've come to realize is that we really have control over nothing other than ourselves. And even then within ourselves, can I control my actions? Sure, I can. But some of them are driven by my subconscious mind. 
So like, Karina, you and I will have a conversation. You will say something triggers me. Boom, I react. Did I control that? No, I didn't. That was automatic. Right? So then you look at actions. Yeah, sometimes. Then from actions, you go to feelings. Sure, you know, I feel sad. I feel down. Can I control that and change it? Not very easily. And then we have the thoughts and beliefs, which are influenced by your environment. And people usually focus on the environment to, to try to control it. But then again, you can't really. I mean, you can control where you put yourself in the environment. So do I work with these people? Do I hang out with these people? Do I watch the news? Do I go on this social media platform? You can control that. But that's usually driven also by your feelings and everything else. And I left thoughts and beliefs out for a reason. That's what I have found to be the only place where you have 100% control. Mm. Because here's what happens. Your environment influences your thoughts and beliefs. And beliefs could be you're not good enough, you're not creative enough, you're not going to make enough money being creative, you're not going to put yourself out there, all those limiting beliefs. And once you have a thought and a belief come up, then that's going to result in a feeling, which results in an action, which results in a result. So if my thought and belief is negative, then the feeling associated with that cannot really be positive, now can it? And if I have a negative feeling, can I really take a good action, a great action? All the actions I take will be impacted. And then, of course, the results are just the result of what I've done so far. So it has to come back to the thoughts and beliefs. And you can absolutely change all of them. There's a term in psychology that's a newer thing that they've come up with called neuroplasticity. The idea that they, for the longest time, they thought that once you grew up past a certain age, your beliefs, your thoughts, your mindset, everything about you was fixed. You could not change it anymore. Now they're able to prove it. That, wait a second. Not only can you change it, but you can make drastic changes very, very quickly because you can adjust your thoughts and your beliefs and your patterns. And that's what I work with, with people on top of finding their purpose. And there are easy, easy ways. I mean, if we have time, I can give you a quick way that people can start doing that. Love right. it. Yeah, let's do that. So give give everyone this, this method. Okay. Now, before I start really quick, let me ask you this, Karina. Let's say you're working on the computer, right? You're just going about your day. Then you have a thought come up and say, oh, yeah, I need to go do that. Maybe put, pick up a pen and paper from the kitchen, do something specific. You get up, you go to the kitchen, you get there and you're like, huh, why did I come here for? Does yeah. that happen to you? <laughs> that happens uh, multiple times a day to me. <laughs> yes. You know what's funny? That's absolutely normal. That's actually a physiological response that we have built into us automatically. So what happened in the case is literally you're thinking something, then you interrupted the pattern and you walked away. That's all done automatically. But what if we could harness the same power to do it on purpose? So let me explain. Yeah, let's hear it. Now you have a thought or a belief come up, let's say you're working on something creative, like you're painting, you're drawing, and you have a thought that maybe gets triggered by a color you use, by a smell, by a sound, and you're like, why am I wasting my time? I shouldn't be doing this. This is not what's gonna bring me money. Well, that's your chance to say, you know what? I become aware that that's a thought that I don't like, that I don't agree with. Let's interrupt it. We just talked about the way you can interrupt it. Literally physically doing something, removing yourself from it, jumping, yelling, whatever you can do within the space you're in. So let's say I'm sitting down, I'm doing that. I get up physically, get myself up. Now, this next part is crucial. What I do is this. And for those that can't see, I'll explain it in a second. I'm taking a deep breath in and putting a huge smile on my face. And I'll explain in a second why. And then, like I'll move back so people can see. I pump my chest. That's how I celebrate. And I say, yes, Constantine, we caught ourselves. We caught the fact that that's a pattern that we don't want to repeat. And then I replace that with a positive thought. So let me explain a couple of things here. When you interrupt the pattern, so when you, when you do it intentionally or intentionally, what happens in your brain? A vacuum gets created called scotoma in psychology. This vacuum, like any vacuum anywhere else in space, needs to be filled in right away. That's how you forget your initial thought because it gets filled in by something else. But what if you could have power to fill it in with whatever you want that's conducive to your best? So now we have the thought, we interrupt it. Now, 
Why am I putting a smile on my face? Why am I taking a deep breath in? Why am I celebrating? Well, what's the, what, what does it do to you? When you have a smile on your face, Karina, what happens? You feel good. You feel happy. And science has shown that you cannot be in two states at the same time. If I'm happy, I cannot be sad. Sure, you can go there after, but you cannot go there in the moment. Mm-hmm. Not only that, but when you smile and when you celebrate especially, your brain releases dopamine and other feel-good hormones. And your brain is going to go like, huh, Constantine, what happened there? Why am I feeling good? Mm-hmm. And it's going to go look for why. Mm-hmm. And now what you're doing is you're reinforcing a behavior you want to build within yourself. And then, of course, you replace the thought. So we said the negative thought was like, oh, I shouldn't be wasting my time on this. You mm-hmm. should be like, you know what? This is what brings me joy and passion. And I can I can spend time. Not only can I spend time, I get to spend time doing this. How many people can say they get to spend time on doing what they truly love? It's not many, right? So now I'm putting different beliefs, different thoughts in. You do it once, it's not going to do much. But you start repeating it, it's going to be transformative. And I'm telling, like, I'll give you a quick example, Karina. I was sitting with a nurse friend of mine last weekend. We were having dinner late at night. And she's going through a bit of a rough patch, the winter blues here in Canada. And she's like, well, what do you tell your clients? Like, what, what do you tell them to do when these thoughts come up? And I went through the same exercise with her. And she was skeptical. She's a nurse, very scientific. And I understand it's not for everyone. But here's the funny thing. The next day, so not even 12 hours later, he, she messages me and she's like, wow, this stuff actually works. <laughs> I have no idea how. And she keeps doing it now because that's the, that's the beauty of this. There's something called negativity bias that we all grew up with because that's part of our physiology as well, which will make you navigate towards negativity and it will allow you to see negativity faster than anything else and, and withdraw it. Again, that's because of our evolution, which means that we have to work a bit harder on the positive stuff. Yeah, yeah, that is totally true. And it, it's so interesting because I was just telling my team this because um, they are showing that um, bots on Instagram, that's like related to this, bots on Instagram initially um, did positive uh, comments, but found that they got no response. Yes. So that's why you see all these bots that say negative things because they get a response. Exactly. Exactly. And if you think, I mean, logically, that's what I've come to realize. I'm like, I use logic now to look back, think about a hundred years and before, let's say a thousand years ago, you lived in a very dangerous world. Anything and everything can kill you, right? Anything was a danger to you. So if the negative thoughts and the negativity around you wouldn't make its way faster than everything else to your brain, to your unconscious mind, so you can act, you would likely be dead, which means that evolutionarily we couldn't evolve that way because we would be killed off a lot faster. So we're fighting against a machine that doesn't it doesn't change overnight. And that's okay because in this world, we still have negative things to worry about, but not nearly as much as before. So once we know that knowledge is power, as they say, right? Once you become aware of it, and I say awareness is half the battle, then you can do something about it. You can still choose to do nothing, which is fine. But then you can also choose to do something about it because now you hold the power. It goes back to what you asked me. It's like, what would I leave people with? It's like, you hold the power to do absolutely any, anything in your life, everything you want, everything your heart desires. Yeah. Yeah. You just have to decide that you want that bad enough, right? So, so amazing. You guys, I hope you got so much out of that today. If you want to go check out more of what Constantine is doing, go check out unleashthyself.com and we'll give you some, some also some other websites on the show notes. Constantine, thank you so much for being with us today. It's been such a pleasure. Thank you for having me on. All right, guys, we will see you soon and take care. Uh, We just want you to continue that amazing creative life. We'll see you soon. Bye.